hi. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, today we're going to just talk about uh, opinions versus facts, I guess. Um, so let's just talk about this. This is a conversation I've had many times, mostly with people who don't know much about computers, which is a choice. Uh, I think it's silly to, to not educate yourself on something that you use daily. It's kind of like, I have a car, I'm not a mechanic, uh, but I try to understand how an engine works and how things are done. I may not change my own tires. I have done it before. Um, well, I've rotated my tires. I haven't changed my tires, put new tires on there. I'm a, you know, but at least I learn. I try to learn at least how things work, even if I'm going to still pay someone else to do it. And I feel like computers are, are kind of the same way. It's like we use them so much, but people just choose to, to not understand them. It's like I, people know why you put oil on a car, but people just, when it comes to software, it's like I don't even want to know sometimes. So anyway, this conversation, this argument I've had with people is they compare software to art type things. And in some ways, uh, it does make sense. Uh, but the thing is, Art is, a, is an opinion. I mean, literally, I can sit here and go, doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba doom and you can take that little sound clip and loop it over again and say it's your favorite song, and you would be right. You can say it's a great song, and you would be right, because it's a matter of opinion. That sounds good to you. You think that's good. You know, someone else can argue with you, but you can't argue opinions. I don't think that sounds good. I do think that sounds good. Those are opinions. You can't really argue them, or you're just going to go in circles. thing is, software has functionality, and functionality can be compared. So... If one program does something better than another, or in some cases, maybe this one has some functionality, like you have a music player, one plays only MP3s, and the other one will play MP3s and AUG audio files. Well, this one plays more formats, so theoretically it's a better software, but you can also look at different aspects of stuff. For example, let's say, you know, I like using the shell for as much as I can. There are certain things that using a shell isn't good for, but with the shell I can argue, you know, it's lighter weight, uh, you know, it runs faster, I can do things, I can do most things faster on a keyboard in the shell than I could with a mouse and a GUI. But, on my cell phone, that may not be the case. I do have a full shell, you know, on a keyboard, but it's slower to type stuff, so in, on my phone, in many cases, icons are a better route to go. Uh, and I can make icons that actually run my shell scripts, that automate stuff, uh, so I don't have to type out the commands, or yeah, even sometimes still use the shell, I just have short aliases, two to three characters. But in most cases, on a small little device where you don't have a physical keyboard, you're doing on-screen touch stuff, GUI interface is usually a better interface. So I can still argue that a, a shell is lighter weight and maybe runs faster, but uh, and is more usable on a desktop with a keyboard. But in other cases, a GUI interface, even though it might take, uh, need a little more overhead and be a little more bloated, uh, the usage of it on a small screen might be better. So there are different ways to argue that out. But at least you can argue that, argue that out and you can come to a clear winner, you know, depending on what aspects you're looking at. Uh, and again, to me, it might be more important to have lightweight stuff where you might want more functionality. Uh, and it, it, it just all depends uh, on that is an opinion. But when you compare them, yes, this one runs faster. This one uh, ha has some other functionality that may be important for what you're doing. So art and software... There's some overlap, but for the most part, there is a distinguished winner when you're looking at a particular subject for those softwares, certain category for those softwares. Softwares? For that software? For those programs? Anyway, let's move on to uh, a similar subject, because this kind of kind of combines in most of the conversations when it comes to uh, a phone and privacy. Um, so, you know, first of all, you know, there, there are lots of different operating systems, or at least a handful of operating systems out there for different phones, different phone formats. And, uh, you know, I can argue, you know, let's just look at, at Android versus iOS. Functionality-wise, Android wins hands down. Uh, iOS cannot do a fraction of the things that a standard Android system can do. Uh, and, and this is just a very basic example I've used before. Go onto an iOS device, go to a website that has a link for an MP3 or an MP4, some sort of media file, and try to download it. It might, it might let you stream that file, but it will not let you download it, at least last I checked, which was pretty recent. You know, to get those on, you got to go through Apple software and sometimes even have to hook up a wire to a computer transfer it over. Where on an Android device, you just, you know, click 
download as and save as, you know. Um, and as I said before, you can go back in time, 20, 30 years, you know, Windows 95 or even earlier, uh, and you get a web browser, and you can click on a link and download any file. There's no restrictions. So functionality-wise, Android beats out iOS. Um, but that's, that's, that's only part of the issue. So let's go to another part of this conversation. We're talking about privacy. A lot of people go, oh, but Android, Android is, is Google, and Google tracks you, and they, they look at all you do. Apple does the same thing. Google might do it a little better, but Apple's doing the same thing. But here's the big difference. If you have an Apple device, you have an iPhone, you're pretty much stuck with what you've got. You've got the iOS. There have been previous older versions uh, of the hardware where you might be able to get some version of Linux run on there with some of the hardware working, but pretty much you're stuck with iOS. And even rooting that is difficult in many cases. Where Android, on the other hand, people equate it Android Google which is not, not really true. Google makes a version of Android that a lot of you know, hardware manufacturers use, but Android is a free and open source program released under the, mainly the GPL and the Apache license. And it's a community thing. You can take the source code and you can compile your own. And there are already people out there, there are projects out there like Lineage OS. Back in the day we had SciEngine Mod. I think Lineage OS is probably the biggest one now. And in most cases, you can download that and install on your device without Google services. Now. Google is, some of the source code they made may get in there, but it, it doesn't necessarily link to their services. And as far as source code goes, you can look at the source code and see what it's doing. You can very easily on many devices install uh, Android without the Google services. In fact, most of the time when you do go with an alternate uh, Android install than what comes from the manufacturer, it's not going to have the Android services on there uh, by default, and you have to sideload them. Um, so you can definitely take most phones, install Android without Google services. And uh, when I say most, because some manufacturers lock down their devices, but many don't. Uh, Motorola is very good about allowing you to unlock the bootloader and unlocking, rooting, and then unlocking from a cell phone carrier, unlocking the bootloader, unlocking from a cell phone carrier, and rooting are all different things. But once you unlock the bootloader, you can then up, you know, change the, uh, the operating system that's on there uh, to your liking, pretty much. And like I said, some companies like Motorola, or even the devices you get from Google, like if you have a Nexus or a Pixel device, they allow you to unlock it, and you can just wipe out all, the, all the, the default stuff, or at least back it up in case you want to put it back on there, and load a version of Android that doesn't use the Google services. Now, that's a good thing. Uh, doesn't, you know, cell phones in general, or just by their nature, uh, there's going to be some tracking that is obvious, because uh, no matter whether you you get a, a, an old flip phone, you're still connecting to a cell phone tower somewhere. And they know that that device connected to this tower, so they know you're within a couple of miles of that tower, and it's pinging other towers too, so they can, they can somewhat triangulate and find it within range where you are. Now you can say, well, I can buy uh, a phone with cash. You know, this is how, you know, how deep you want to get with this. It's like, okay, so you can get yourself an old flip phone uh, that doesn't have any software on it other than, you know, than, than, than uh, an embedded uh, firmware. Uh, you can get that, but, uh, and you bought it cash, so now it's not linked to you, but do they have cameras in the store? I mean, if you really want to get paranoid about it, and, and I'm not saying paranoid is a bad thing, that might be a good thing that you're being paranoid, they're going to see your face? All these stores, Target, Walmart, they all have cameras. You know, uh, it wasn't that long ago that, that uh, the, the Amazon started opening up their, uh, you know, grocery stores, and people are like, oh, no, invasion of privacy. They have cameras everywhere, and they're tracking your phone, and blah, blah, blah. You know what? Every store has cameras. They may have more cameras, but every store has cameras. And just because you're going to 7-Eleven, and they're not doing facial recognition stuff now, doesn't mean they're not saving the security video, and later on they can take those years and years worth of security footage and run it through facial recognition, and now, even though before they weren't tracking you, now I know, you know, every time you've gone to a 7-Eleven in the last 10 years, you know, you're being looked at, you're being watched, and, you know, if you have a phone that has Wi-Fi, uh, and that Wi-Fi is on, in some cases, even if it's off, um, it's, uh, for, for like a few dollars, really like, like under $10 easily, I can make a device that logs every Wi-Fi device that comes into range. So I can stick one of these devices 
and log every MAC address, which is like a serial number for your Wi-Fi device that comes into range. So even if you cover up your face, if you have a phone that has Wi-Fi, or even a tablet that has Wi-Fi, I can log when you come near my store, and I'll know, you know, how often you come. Makes me think of um, uh, cars. I'm pointing over there because my cars are over there. Your car has four tires on it, and a lot of new cars, my last three cars, all had uh, pressure uh, gauges on them. So let you know if a tire gets low, a little light comes on on my dash. You know how those work? There, there's a guy who did a project on this. You can find the source code on GitHub. I wish I could remember his name. It's been a couple of years since I watched it. But with an, uh, a little dongle, a little $10 SDR radio dongle, you can set it to a frequency and log the wireless signals from someone's tires. So you have four tires. And those little devices, they, they turn on when the tires start spinning. They have a little gyro or some sort of thing that turns them on, so they're not all the time. That's why the batteries don't die. And on average, each tire once per minute will send out a signal wirelessly uh, that you can pick up. And you can say once per minute, but in theory, there are four tires. Uh, so, I mean, if you assume that they're all spread out uh, in their signaling, which they're probably not, but you could assume that once every 15 seconds, I'm going to signal from your car. And each one has, sends out its own, you know, little serial number or some sort of MAC address, some sort of identifier. So if I know uh, the, the four numbers on your four tires, I can set up a sensor somewhere and know uh, when you come by. I can put it at an intersection. Oh, so so-and-so, Tom over there, I know he drives by that intersection every day at 3 o'clock because I have the logs. Anytime you have a wireless device on you, you have the possibility of being tracked. And your phone has Bluetooth. It has Wi-Fi, and it has a cell signal, maybe even more, you know. Um, so think about that. Uh, actually, I think there was even a thing. So your, cam your phone has a little IR sensor on it so that when you answer the phone, it's a little range detector. It detects, uh, well, I think it's IR. Pretty sure it's IR. They used to be IR on the phones. And so it would detect, like, uh, whether that light's bouncing back or not and turn off the screen. I'm pretty sure I saw a project once where someone with a camera was able to log that, and I guess each phone might have a different flicker rate, so you can, with some sort of accuracy, determine whose phone is what based on the little flicker coming from that IR, if you have a camera pointing at them when they're talking on their phone. So there is no perfect scenario. You can get a phone that's completely free and open source, and you've read every line of code, and you understand every line of code, all the drivers are free, but just the nature of it, you have a cell phone, it's sending out wireless signals. And if there's radio signals coming out of you, it can be tracked. Now, I'm not trying to be all paranoid about it. I'm just saying there is no perfect solution. But if you have a choice between something that gives you mostly freedom and something, you know, you can say, well, mostly freedom is not freedom. Yeah, well, true freedom in the aspect we're talking about is impossible in the current world right now. Maybe someday things will change, probably not. <laughs> As I said, there's, there's wireless signals flying out from you all the time. But if you have something like an Apple phone, not even talking about functionality, again, I can say pretty much anything the software on iOS does, Android can do that and more. I've never seen a situation where it can't. And one of the big arguments for iOS or Apple devices is, oh, they all work great together. Well, they work great with other Apple products, but most computer good programmers write stuff that's compatible with everything, you know, as much as possible. Uh, for, for example, it's like lots of times if people, here's, here's an example, FaceTime. FaceTime is great, but you need an Apple device. There are many, many other video chat programs out there, both closed and open, that doesn't matter what operating system you're on. How is that easier? Oh, because it works with our, it's like, no, it's like, here's a link. There, there, there are video chat programs where I send you a link and that's it. You don't even have to install anything. It does it right in the browser. <laughs> How much easier can you get? As long as you have a, a browser built in the last five years, we can video chat without you having to install anything. Again, that's functionality. That's not necessarily privacy. Obviously, if you're linking through a server to video chat, who knows what's going on? Um, so functionality and ease of use, Apple products, <laughs> they lose. I mean, that's, you can argue all you want, but those are provable facts, you know? Uh, and there's going to be a lot of comments arguing uh, otherwise, and it's just not true. And the thing is, you can argue all you want, give examples. And most times, your examples are going to fail when actually put up to the test. Uh, and I'm not, you know, spouting off about how great Android is. 
In general, I think Android sucks. Let me say that again. I think Android sucks, but it's 100 times better than iOS. Why does it suck? Well, yeah, as far as an interface for a small device, it's actually pretty good. The interface, you know, but as far as the underlining OS, it's, it's, it's using Linux kernel, which is great, but the way they have uh, their file system set up is just funky and weird, and, and uh, the way their apps work is, is just disgustingly uh, everywhere. And, uh, and as far as their security, and I say that security because I think most security is fake security to make you feel well. The whole, um, you know, permissions per app I think is just ridiculous. I am a user. I should have permissions as this user. And if I have permissions to do that, my app should have permission. My program should have permission to do that. And if I want something more advanced, I should have to type in some sort of security key. Not just be like, yes, okay, forever from now on, this program can use my, my camera. You know, it's like either I can use the camera or I can't. And if I don't want uh, programs using the camera without my knowledge, I should have some sort of password to put in. Anyway, I think Android is horrible, but a hundred times, a thousand times better than iOS, just because there are no restrictions. Once you have rooted an Android device, and Android by default is rooted, it's going to give you that root possibility. If, if you don't have root, it's because your vendor locked your device down. It's not because Android is necessarily locked down. And again, if they allow you to unlock your bootloader, you've got root. It's basically, it's, it's, it's one, one leads to the other. Uh, where iOS, Apple does everything they can. Anytime there's a new way to root the device, they stop it and they'll call it security. Again, that fake security. We're doing it for you. It's security. No, you're doing it for you to stop me from doing things you don't want me to do because you want control over me. And that's what it comes down to. It's all about control. You're trying to control me. You don't want me downloading MP3s because you want me buying them from you. Don't, you don't want me downloading movies because you want me buying them from you. And even if you're giving them to me free, you want me using your services so you can see what I'm doing and decide what I'm going to watch, what I'm going to listen to. And that's what it's all about. It's about control. Don't let people, don't let companies you don't know control you. You know what? Don't let Google control you. Don't let Apple control you. Don't let Amazon control you. You should be in control of yourself. You should be in control of your device. Nobody else should. If you don't have root on your device, every device has some sort of root or admin uh, level. And if it's not you, it's somebody else. If it's not you, then it's a company somewhere else, and they're in control of your device. You're not in control of your device. You should be in control of your device. If you don't have root and you can't get root, well, then someone else is controlling your device, which is, for most people, a big portion of their life. Again, your phone logs everything. It knows more about you than you do, uh, you know. As it's, it's said, you know, it's like they know not just what store you go to, but how long you spent uh, on what part of an aisle. So they know what you've been looking at. It's like, I know I went to the store the other day. Do I remember exactly what time? Do I remember how long I was there? Do I remember how long I was at a certain aisle? And I'm sounding like, I think is it, what I'm saying right now, Brian Lunduk said. But basically, it knows more about you than you do based on stuff like that. And you're going to give that control to somebody else? Mm -mm -mm. Get a device that you have root access on, whether it be an Android device that you've unlocked and got root access on. And you know what? Even if you don't unlock it and don't get yourself root access, just having a device that you know that you can, that's another thing. It's, it's like, okay, maybe I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not an advanced user. I don't have any need to root my device for whatever reason. And I also get uh, security on phones is ridiculous. On my desktop, I want to do something as root or administrator, I've got to type in a password in most cases, unless I disable that, which is just ridiculous. But on an on a Android device, once you install root, it's a matter of, I want to run root. Okay, okay, no password required. And that's one of those, they try to make it more secure, but it's less secure. If you're not typing a password to get root access, well then, it's not really secure. Anybody can click that. It's kind of like on a Windows machine, when Windows started doing, this program's trying to run, is that okay? yes or no, or okay or cancel, or whatever their options are. It's like the second I saw it, I was like, what? Well, first of all, yeah, that program's trying to run because I tried running it. Yeah, of course I want it to run. That's why I tried running it, you know? And if I didn't start it, how is an okay or a cancel button secure? That's not security. That's not security. Your phone is not secure in that case. So, so maybe you don't want to have it rooted all the time, but just knowing that you can. When you buy a device, see, can I root this? Can I change the operating system on it? You know, you don't have to, but just knowing that you can. 
In fact, I was just talking to a friend recently. He has an old iPad, and it's running real slow, and he's thinking about getting an Android device. And I said, well, I, I haven't been shopping one, so I can't really recommend one, but I said, go to Lineage OS or one of these you know, community projects for Android and look at their list of devices. If, that, if the device is on that list, that means you can unlock it and you can change the software because his concern was, hey, years from now, will I still get updates? And most manufacturers, two to three years after a device is released, they stop updates. But if you can unlock it and it's listed on one of these community projects, that means you'll probably, well, you definitely can, but depending on, uh, you can definitely always upgrade it yourself, but hopefully there will be a community around that uh, device where if it, you can't unlock it, well, then it will eventually die out because you won't be able to get updates for it anymore. For example, I have a Samsung tablet, which I was able to unlock and stuff, but I had to jump through all these hoops because Samsung does not like you unlocking their devices. And that's why I won't buy a Samsung device anymore. I like that tablet as far as the hardware goes, but the jumping through hoops to unlock it, because I didn't look before I bought it, but now I always look. Whenever I'm buying a device, I look, is it on this list of devices for one of these community projects like Lineage OS? If it's on there, good. I don't even have to root it or unlock it because I know that I can. Although if you don't unlock it now, they might somehow pull that later on. But usually if it's one of those devices, it's because the company, you'll void your warranty. And that seems to concern some people. Have you ever actually really used a warranty on a phone? You know, after 30 days or 60 days, I don't expect a warranty to do anything for me. If it's within 60, 30 to 60 days, I'm just going to bring it back and exchange it at the store I bought it from. So anyway, I've been rambling for over 20 minutes now, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hateful comments right below. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me how great iOS is, um, uh, or tell me how you agree with me. I don't care either way. Again, it's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of fact. And when it comes to software, uh, you either can do it or can't do it. Let me give another example, though. Uh, so sometimes uh, you can argue that a piece of software is better, but the difference is minimal, so it doesn't really matter. So, for example, if you ever whack, work, whack, if you ever worked with uh, Apple desktop or laptop computers, uh, you know, and uh, Ubuntu, uh, at least at one point was like this, I don't know if it still is, where they have <clears throat> one toolbar at the top of the screen for all programs. So when you click on a program, it's got the file, the edit, the, the whatever other options are up there uh, for that program. When you click on each program, it goes to that bar. And I hate that. And I can prove that that's less efficient than having each, a bar on each one. <clears throat> Say I have two windows. I'm working in this one. Now I want to go up to file open on this one. I've got to click on this window and then go up to the bar up here, click file, where if it was in that program, I just go over and click file open. It's one less step and a lot less uh, mouse movement. I said that once to a guy uh, at an Apple store that worked there. And his response was, I use shortcut keys so it doesn't bother me. And I'm right on the same page. So it's not a big deal because I use shortcut keys. And even if I was using the mouse, most people, it does make a difference, but they don't really care. I really don't see the advantage of, of just one bar. That just seems like a bad idea to me. But if you like that, the functionality difference is minimal. So it's partially opinion, partially fact. But the fact is to go, to have to go click, click, click. Instead of just click, click, that's one extra click and one bigger movement. It's not as, as functional or efficient, I should say. Anyway, I do thank you for watching again. Comment below. And I hope that you have a great day.